Season of Discovery Phase 2 is coming imminently, and a lot of people have questions on what is going to be the optimal route for them to level moving into the next phase. Basically, now that we know that there's going to be some changes for experience, the BFD raid will give you a ton of XP. Waylaid supplies should be buffed and give more XP, as well as they are no longer going to be unique. As you probably have something like a quest stack or a dungeon cleave group, what's going to be the best route? What is the first First things you should do and in what order to be able to push your way all the way to level 40 as fast as you can. Now, of course, this is always a very try hard type thing. It's very much try hard. But even if you just want to get a little bit of a step up and then go into questing today, I will try to break down the optimal ways to do all of that. So, of course, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Now, first of all, if you are taking advantage of being as prepared as you possibly can in the next phase, then you're probably stacked as many quests as you possibly can. Ideally, you have kind of an optimal quest stack. All of these are actually completed, so I have everything done and ready to turn in, as well as multiple other quests that I can pick up and turn in in each location. Now, with my quests right now, I get to almost level 28. That's because I did not do like a perfect quest stack. I did some quests while leveling, and that's totally fine. But I'm not going to be turning in my quest stack as the first thing I do as phase two launches. Instead, I'm going to be focused on something else because the devs have announced and it has been data mined that the BFD raid will be granting us experience and a quote unquote significant amount of experience as a level up raid moving into the next phase. Now, it will also have a three day lockout, the normal three day lockout. So right on launch, you should be able to go in here with a 10 man group, blast through it, and you will get what we are finding out from data miners, which might be completely different than what we're going to get, but it might be 23,000 experience. Now, for the first level alone, from 26 to 25, you need 34,000, and this will push you a significant way through a level in quite a short amount of time. Now, the real goal here, or the real good thing from it, is that it is a very, very quick dungeon or a quick raid that will give you a significant amount of experience. That is a ton of quest turn-ins. It's kind of like having an extra 10 quest turn-ins for some pretty decent quests. So that's a very nice chunk of change. Should you go into the BFD raid right on launch, knock that out, and then do your quest turn-ins? Well, this is a question that I think can be answered with are you doing things in the most optimal manner or do you want like a little bit of a heads up or a step up above everyone else? If you just want to take things in a very solid way, then I would absolutely directly head into BFD. I would even be parked outside of BFD right on launch, unboon right as you enter so your entire raid can blast through here significantly faster and then boon up your roll buffs as soon as you complete the raid and head on to doing your quest turn-ins. Now, if you were super min maxing here, here's the kind of trick. Here's the catcher. BFD raid doesn't count against your dungeon lockouts. And if you are going quickly in a dungeon cleave group, you're going to probably hit the dungeon lockout, even in a longer dungeon, potentially like RFK. So what can we do that kind of min maxes the potential here? You can start the phase with your dungeon cleave group, do your first five lockouts as fast as humanly possible, and then head directly to the raid and clear that as fast as you can. This does require you to have two groups fully set up to be able to meet up at a specific time and be able to blast through the raid so that now you are quite a significant margin ahead. And after you do this, you should then be able to turn in all of your quests. This will launch you light years ahead of everybody else because one, once you're done turning in all of your quests, your lockouts are fully back. And two, you also got usages out of five lockouts, your BFD raid, and all of your quest turn-ins. Now, it's not time to head back to dungeon cleaving just yet, and it's not time to head out to any of your questing just yet if you are going to be solo questing yourself. This should put you around like level 28, 29, 30 
pretty even if you had things perfectly planned out. And before I get into the next thing you should do if you're fully min-maxing, no matter what you're doing, if you are going to do any questing in this next phase or want some help figuring out where the new runes are, then I would highly suggest always getting the add-on rested XP. And that's because as we're heading into new zones, into new territory, as there's new quests or new runes, it can be extremely helpful to just be able to follow an arrow that tells you what to do to optimally quest and get to the next level as fast as you possibly can. Rested XP Season of Discovery Guides also always show you where you can find any of the runes you want. It's quite literally just click on whatever rune you want and it will be updated, giving you an exact guide on how to get that rune. This will be updated as we're moving into phase two. So as soon as runes are discovered, you can expect RXP to be updated. This is just the most relaxing way to level in my experience. And it's not something that everybody needs to do. And it is a paid add on now that we are past level 20. So you don't need to get it. But if you do want to run with rested XP, you can grab it from the code in the description or the pinned comment. But again, you don't need to get it. It is just extremely helpful. And I suggest it to everybody that doesn't know their way around any of the new zones. Now, if we're getting back to min maxing this entire situation, what are you going to do? You're level 28, 29, or maybe even level 30. The next thing you want to do before heading out either into your next dungeon cleave group or your next questing excursion is absolutely to turn in your waylaid supplies and your Warsong Gulch Marks. Scratch that, Blizzard just confirmed that Warsong Gulch Marks will no longer work from levels 25 through 40. You get no XP for these at all. If you farm them already, then you kind of got screwed. Also, waylaid supplies will no longer work for anyone above level 25. If you have the current version of waylaid supplies, you will not be getting any XP for these above 25. That means you absolutely need to just drop this part of the actual leveling experience. Now, these were going to give you a ton of XP, and they do give you a lot of XP if you're leveling up to 25 a ton for catch-up mechanics, so they should be a good mitigation if you've already done all of your quests in a zone, then it seems like these will give a very, very solid amount of experience to turn them in. But again, it's only the new ones that will actually be viable at all. This is like the first hour, two, three hours of the launch of the phase, and you've blasted up like six levels, seven levels, or even more. Now, again, this is the super try hard way of doing things, just an order for you all if you're just gonna do this anyways to help you figure out how you can min max it, but also just a suggestion and an order for you if you're taking it casually, if you have these options available. Now that you've completed your first lockouts, now that you've completed the BFD raid, now that you've turned in all of your quests, it's time to figure out what's next. What is the new way we're gonna push on to level 40? Well, that's the magic of Season of Discovery. I personally am probably gonna go out and quest. Of course, I'm gonna follow the Rest XP guide. I'm gonna head to one of the new zones and look out for anything new because discovering the new runes is one of the most fun things you could possibly do in the new phase. If you were one of the first people to ever figure it out and you didn't see it on a guide, it is so much fun and I think you guys all remember that. So as a horde, that means I'm either headed to Thousand Needles or Arathi and then right after headed to Shimmering Flats. This is gonna set you ahead of the curve. So at Shimmering Flats, you're gonna have a ton of kill quests where you can do it all without a ton of competition. But if I wanted to do a dungeon grind, which dungeons would I do and in what order? Well, this definitely depends on what your group looks like. If you're min-maxing, even as Horde, I would suggest doing your first five lockouts of something like Sock Aids. The first thing you should do is Sock Aids. It's very fast and there's a ton of XP in here. So as Alliance, Sock Aids farming is a very solid option until about level 28 or 29. Then you have the decision to head on between RFK or Scarlet Monastery. Scarlet Monastery has both the graveyard as well as the library open to you at early levels. You can do them right now, but at level 28, it will be significantly easier and faster. If you go to SM at this level, then you will be here pretty much for the rest of your experience. You can still eventually hit lockouts, so make sure that your hearth is set here or you have summoners based here so you can get back here while you go out and do a little bit of quest 
interesting during that lockout timer. For RFK, I usually love to go here if I am a melee cleave group. That's because there are a ton of caster mobs as well as archers in this dungeon. And unless you're very organized and LOSing everything, your casual dungeon cleave group won't be able to pull off a very efficient XP farm in RFK compared to what you can do in Scarlet Monastery. Now that's not to say that it's not even the most efficient dungeon. It, it absolutely could be, but the issue is you have to be very organized and probably need to know all the routing beforehand. I might make a video on how to do everything, but just know RFK is generally easier if you're a melee cleave group and a caster cleave group would love to go into Scarlet Monastery since you can pull literally everything to one corner and blow it all up. As you get closer to 33 to 35, you absolutely want to head over to Scholar Monastery if you're not there. This is where it's gonna be the most efficient for you, as well as there's gonna be quests that will give you pre-best in slot items, even some best in slot items for certain classes. And this should also be where we find a lot of the quality of life books. This means during your leveling process, if you are dungeon cleaving, you could already be picking up some of the books that will massively increase either your DPS or just make your life better as whatever class you are. And these range from being able to control your combo points on a rogue or increasing the buff durations and reducing the mana costs on some of the caster classes. These are gonna be amazing and these will be dropping in these five-man dungeons. The best ones to get these are probably gonna be Armory, Cathedral, and RFD. And on top of that, all of the casters, literally all of you casters want to be doing these dungeons because they reworked all of the caster loot in these dungeons to just be absolutely phenomenal. It is so much more powerful than it was already. So you're you're gonna get huge power spikes by being able to run these dungeons as well. And from there, you're level 40. You could do this within the first day of phase two launch. Now, I don't think you need to rush the experience all the way to 40, but this is how you would min max it. I will be leveling multiple characters and my first one, I will be going hard as well as I will be covering the race to world first, not just to level 40, but the race to world first Nomergan raid. As always, if you want to see that, come check it out live on the Twitch channel. I will have POVs of all of the top guilds going for that. But outside of that, I'll try to keep you updated on all changes that are coming for phase two, all new things in phase two, and everything you should look out for in season of discovery. Thanks for watching guys. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe if you like the video and I'll see you all on the next one.